Hi, I'm Sherry Fletcher. I'm the Director of Marketing and Civic Engagement here at the City of Stillwater. We recently ran a flash vote about shop local habits, and we've invited uh, flash votes Kevin Lyons to kind of explain the results and kind of walk us through on how to uh, read a flash vote survey. Hi, Kevin, and welcome. Good morning. Thanks for uh, pulling this together. Absolutely. I think a lot of people have really come to enjoy uh, seeing the surveys come through from Flash Vote and having the opportunity to have their voice heard. But I think um, this would probably be helpful to make sure that people understand on how to uh, to read the surveys. And I think the shop locals are really good one to walk people through. So I'm just going to turn it over to you. And what can you tell us about a Flash Vote result? Well, uh, so in a nutshell, <clears throat> At the end of the 48 hour survey, the results get automatically calculated using uh, the filters that are set up for you guys. And they're shared with everybody who's taken the survey. They get a courtesy email. And with that link, they can click on the survey. And in fact, the, the original survey to uh, link to take the survey converts into the results page so that even if you miss the survey, you can at least see the results. Uh, so that's the uh, that's probably what they like, you know, the openness and transparency. And uh, yeah, I can walk you through how how we look at survey results, you know, kind of give you that extra, extra level as well as just kind of showing you the features that are on there. Uh, well, I'll let you go ahead and uh, you want to pull up the results. And yeah, let me pull up, uh, pull up the screen and I'll just kind of give you a real, uh, you know, look and reaction uh, to the results. All right. So here's the results page. And First thing I look at is, you know, the thing that jumps out at you is like the number of people. And, you know, the target ideally is 250 to 600 because that's a good, um, you know, minimum margin of error as it's called, kind of the best you can do with a, with a perfect sample. Um, in this case, we had also look, we had 901 total participants and that 767 of those came from the, uh, the panel that you guys have at this point, which is 1,297 people. So I like to look at the percentage, you know, make sure it's in that 40 to 70% range, a really, really high response rate. And this one is, it's 59%. And then it looks like there was 135 others that took it, which is interesting. So that's a heads up that, can you see the uh, the drop down menu? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When I see that, uh, that's a heads up to also look at the invited sample separate from the uninvited. If there's, you know, more than say a few dozen people in that group. All right, so the basic survey page, the default is the locals only filter. So that's people with an address in Stillwater, provided the address in Stillwater. With that, I like to uh, look down. You can also see if you're interested that when people took the survey during the 48 hours, it was open, when it opened, when it closed. And the filter in this case, all the people with an address in Stillwater, 625 people. So that's what we're seeing right now on Q1. So Q1 was over the last few weeks, what percent of the household purchases would you say were from businesses within Stillwater city limits? We had it broken into quadrants, basically, more than 75, 51 to 75, 26 to 49, and not much, 25 or less. There's actually some more color there and sometimes the table view, which I just clicked on is useful if you wanna see the whole question, if it's a real long one. But it looks like um, the answer for you guys is that there actually is a lot of local shopping. A little over half are doing almost all. Yeah, so, but you can definitely see there's a trend, you know, um, and maybe that's not surprising. Our use tax went up, so people are buying online. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay. we're seeing a, a definitely uh, an increase in that, but uh, for the most part, we're doing better than really expected. Uh, That's really interesting. Well, and that gets us to Q2, which as I recall, yeah, whenever the pandemic risks, risks decrease and restrictions are lifted, how do you think your use of online shopping will change? And the first one was I never really switched. You know, I just kept kept doing what I was doing. The next one was, I will actually stop all my new online ordering and go back to what I was doing. Uh, and there's a, there's a little chunk of people there. And so the top two are really no change people. 
-hmm. Then the third one, I'll go to table view just so you can see the whole thing, is I will still do some online ordering that I wasn't doing before, but I will go back to most of my in-person. So there's there's strong intent there actually, even to the people who uh, are doing a lot more. And then there's kind of, I will keep doing most of the online. So there's your heads up in terms of future sales tax hit right there. Right. And um, those are people who have kind of found something they like in the new system and they'll keep going back. Yeah, but it's not, you know, it's not the most at all. Sorry. I do think a lot of people are liking the, I can order online and go pick it up. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they want to go back to in-store shopping because they really enjoy that feature. Yeah, and I think you're looking at that right there. Yeah, with that, it's a, it's a fifth of people basically. Very interesting. Yeah, and then uh, it looks like, so in terms of what, if anything, would make you more likely to shop locally, this is kind of a, a ranking. You can choose up to four. So we had, looks like number one is improved online presence. Let me get that set up for individual businesses. Interesting. Yeah, and actually, I'm just going to peek ahead to number four because I think that was, yeah, which of the debt platforms have you used to learn about local businesses? Online search, kind of the runaway. Right. Very interesting. So that fits. <clears throat> so if online search is the runaway there, then that says, hey, you know, improve your online presence. You'll be found and give people the info they need to know about your store. Uh, which is really easy now with with tools like Wix and Shopify and, and some others that uh, are really affordable, even for small businesses. Some of them start at free, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So interesting that as I look at this, the... You know, the more likely there's kind of a couple hovering around half Mm -hmm. specials discounts of course all those reasons that little extra nudge to kind of make you check out a store maybe once you're there you become a loyal customer um well, yeah, more information about what's available that's interesting you know in a in a community if you have a lot of turnover and then um the other sort of top one that stuck out was the being more comfortable indoors and of course you know there's a few things you can do for that but ultimately that's going to be up to the individual people right involved. Yeah, I thought this one was really interesting because it did, uh, you know, if you, you kind of know what's in the box stores and yep. you know what to expect when you, you go to a box store. However, if you knew uh, more what the, the local shops have and, you know, or do they have the item you're looking for, mm -hmm. once you know that information, it's a little bit easier to go and shop at some of the smaller shops. So, I think uh, that's right. It's really exciting when you find a neat store, you know, or a store uh, that really has you, what you want or the people there know, know exactly what they're doing and how to help you find what you need there. And the curbside pickup and ca uh, contactless purchase was also a pretty high number too. So I think yeah. that, um, that was something a lot of people, um, you didn't realize you needed it until you needed it. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. We just talking with some friends this weekend, and they're like, "Yeah, I'm not going back. You know, I, I yeah. just, I, I love the pickup. There's no extra charge, and stuff right. like that." Yeah, random, uh, random factoid. My first startup was buy online from local stores 20 years ago. Oh yeah. Yeah, we were way ahead of the curve. Yeah, and, can you uh, explain what this uh, this word cloud is and how you use it? Absolutely. Yeah. So people provide their open-ended responses, examples of which you can see here. And what we do is we organize it into a word cloud so you can kind of look at a word. Huh, what did people say about outside? Just picking one. And you can click on it. So you can click on the word and then see all the results that have that word in it. And it's, a, it's an easy way to organize, you know, thoughts. And of course, the bigger the word, the more frequent it is. So in this case, outside had a couple uses, it looks like. Um, and if I clicked on mask, 
Well, now we're going to see it's, it's showing the first five and there's another 21. So it's 26 different things. And you can just expand that if you want to read them all. You can also just unfilter and read through them all if you want as well. Show them all. Yeah, so there were 131 there. Oh, other. So people had a lot to say. Yeah, it's uh, so I mean, there was a lot of uh, a lot of people. One of their top choices was was something that wasn't on the list. And that's why having other there is always nice. Make sure people can say what they want to say. Awesome. About that. Yeah. And um, yeah, the idea is to capture all the information, make sure people can say what they want to say. There's a lot of stuff to say in, an, in another question, actually. Same in the last. In the last one, it was only, it looks like the, uh, you know, about 7% of people picked another. You know, and then this one, it was, well, you can see, yeah, almost a quarter of the people had something to say, 23%. So there so is a lot the... of in there. Uh, the one thing I think a lot of people may not realize on Flashcut is you alluded to it earlier with the filter mm -hmm. at the top. Yes. Yeah, so I was just going to jump to that. Why you did uh, of interest? Yeah, so I, I like to uh, you know go through the locals only first, and that's kind of the the scientific you know sample, the, the best data you have. Um, but there's subsamples. So the male female split, you know, see if there's kind of any trends there. There's trends by age, even known owner, non-owner. And so um, what's, what's neat is, as we go back up to the top, having been through those, I, I wanted to do that on the first one. I said, oh, that's interesting. Um, you know, the shopping patterns, I wonder if there's any differences by age, for example, or male, female. And so- With it being a college town, you would think that there probably could be. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the real use of the filters is to is to look to see essentially are they the same or are they different in some way that's meaningful. In in the government context, the subgroups are really the whole game. You know, especially if you're thinking about things like equity, whether it's location, city quadrants, or age or gender, any way you want to slice and dice it to see if you're you know kind of serving everyone well and equally. And um, so in this case, you know, locals only is the simplest default. But if we just did, I don't know, you would. Grab age, maybe. It's the next one down the list. It does an automatic recalculation and it'll give you the, we break it into these four categories that are evenly distributed across the country. You've got the highest level. So 30 and under, 31 to 45, 46 to 60 and 61 and over. And uh, it looks like pretty similar actually, you know, maybe. Maybe the older group still uh, still doing it a little more routine. One thing you can see, by the way, if you put your mouse over these bars, if you're wondering about the size of that subsample, kind of double check whether it's reliable as you can always see how many were in that. So in this case, it's like 169 out of 238. So the out of 238 is the size of that sample. So there's 238 people in the 61 and over. There are 230. In the 30 and the 46 to 60, there are 259. Those are all pretty even in the 31 to 45. And the 30 and under is always the, la the least, no matter where you are. So about a quarter of the of this of that. Still pretty good numbers though. Good decent subsamples actually. Awesome. Yeah. So um, yeah, maybe that's a real trend. Maybe it's important. Depends what the what the question is. Uh, so I like to skid that, scam down, uh, skid down the thing and look for like a, a ramp or staircase kind of thing. Once again, I uh, never really switched. These aren't really that those that big a difference, five percent, seven percent. So those again all kind of look the same. That's a little surprising. I would have thought maybe uh, maybe us older folks are more set in our ways. I'm not sharing my bracket. Well, here is, this looks like a little real jump. And it looks like younger folks are actually uh, doing more of the online searching, online presence, more relying on the online presence. That jumps out for sure. That's probably not, not surprising. surprising cause they yeah, not their, surprising. Um, their phones and stuff before they go shopping or- Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> on a menu before they go to a restaurant. There you go. And, uh, and maybe, maybe a little surprising is how high it is for the older categories. Yeah. Uh, so that really is something that, that jumps out is that people really look for that online presence to decide 
you know, which uh, restaurant or store that they would like to go look at. They want to kind of check it out or head yeah. on. Yeah, it really is. And um, you know, I know that Google is actually trying to make it easier for local store owners, you know, now that they've become kind of the front page of the internet and uh, that you can actually update all your hours and even put menus, all that stuff a lot easier than you used to be able to. So what do you push. think of the curbside pickup? I would have thought it would have been the other way around with the, uh, the older crowd wanting uh, curbside pickup instead of the younger crowd. You know, it's uh, it's funny. It's, I, 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 <laughs> I would have thought that too, or even maybe, um, you know, the 31 to 45 tends to be and a little bit of the 46 to 60 is there's the, the parents with kids right. demographic, right? And that that might be appealing. Um, maybe that's what's going on here in this yeah. group. But yeah, I, it's, um, you know, it's not a top ranked option. I mean, maybe you already have enough of it too. That's the right. other thing. So oh, true, true. Um, you know, this was, this was kind of like, we're at where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. What's the extra something or different something that you could do? Clearly the, the, the marching really orders are interesting. Yeah. Well, so I mean, from that perspective, you could, you could argue actually the younger people want it even more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's, that's something that could be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this one is also kind of an, that's kind of the, the classic staircase you might see one way or the other, where right. it's like highest for the youngest and lowest for the oldest. And that's basically, it's kind of what the, the more curbside is doing, but mm -hmm. it's definitely what the home delivery is doing. And that makes sense too, I guess. You know, right. but, uh, here's a great example. So if we look at the, um, you know, for stores, think about who their market is, whether it is younger folks or everyone or older folks. Which have you used to learn about? Now, when you think about targeted marketing, the interesting thing is everyone's doing online search. Wow. Across the board. That's really pretty similar. So online search, business website, pretty consistent. And here's where your delivery hypothesis comes in. Look at that. Yeah. The younger folks. And they're also more relying on the review website, probably, you know, compared to word of mouth. Yeah. Um, so. yeah I think that number there is really important because it does show uh, kind of across the board, people are going uh, to their devices before they make a choice. Yeah. So that's the, that's the age filter. And uh, then there's the, like the, sometimes just look at the male, female quick filter two two big groups and wow yeah and these they're pretty much lockstep pretty much identical maybe a slight difference here eh, it's only three percent i wouldn't really not really oh and then we can also again over mouse it over so 356 male 422 female that's something we see pretty often higher engagement by female mm -hmm. groups subgroups and then not really anything that jumps out. Maybe a slight preference. That's probably real. Yeah. Serve women versus men primarily. You know, those little discounts, but definitely like the pickup is nice. Comfortable indoors. Not, not huge differences, but maybe a little interesting. Facebook. There you go. There's, <laughs> there's your online engagement difference. Yeah, whenever we look at our Facebook analytics, they definitely skewed more toward women because yep. um, they're the ones uh, making a lot of the decisions for the family and they're the ones deciding where you're going to eat, where you're going to shop. A lot of times you'll see that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in general, we, uh, there's a there's a extra engagement, mm -hmm. a little more on the women than men. Cool. And then uh, let's see what else I mentioned the, well, let's look at the quadrants. We did uh, put some some geographic sub districts down for you. We kind of drew back in the day, and we can always we could update them and add different ones if you'd like as well. Uh, which one is the college section? The for red. You guys? The red. Okay, so mm -hmm. the northwest quadrant. Cool. So as we go down, we can look at that as well. So the red quadrant, the northwest. 
Let's see if there's any differences at all by that. Um, maybe there's some a little bit of difference. Maybe they're in the higher end up there. Pretty consistent though. And then, hmm. Now this, that's interesting. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that's right. When we drew these, these weren't electoral districts, right? These were just right. kind of arbitrary draw, not necessarily equal size. Right. So uh, mousing over is always 152 in the Northeast, 163 in the Northwest, 20 in the Southeast. Yeah, that's uh, more of our rule. Uh, there you go. A little bit more um, farmer uh, ranch type live in the okay. Southeast. Mm -hmm. um, the Southwest has a larger family population. A lot of people live in that, that area. The college is in the red, but you do see yep. a lot of uh, the college students living in the blue as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like that's a much smaller geographic yeah. area as well, mm -hmm. too. So, yeah, so that's a smaller group. You know, the, the individual results from a group of 20 people, mm -hmm. um, they're not as bad as you'd think, actually. I think 40 people, just an overall sample, is about plus or minus 15%, uh, which is surprisingly not terrible. Mm -hmm. you know, for, for data. If you're trying to figure out if people are way over here or way over here. Um, but, you know, an outlier like that, you'd want to take with a grain of salt. That's for sure. Awesome. Is there anything we missed? That you Let's would see. Like yeah. So um, just a couple of things. I got to move our pictures out of the way here. There is a uh, PDF download you can do if you want. There's an Excel. If you want to make oh, yeah. your own little charts. And uh, if you want to do hyper technical stuff, it's uh, JSON. Just means you can connect to it directly. Uh, the last thing really is to look at the invited filter. That's my favorite. Is it your favorite? Oh, that's that is great. my favorite. Yeah, it's really interesting because there's essentially it's showing you the scientific sample compared to the kind of people that just find out about a survey and take it for whatever so reason. We, so we had 134 had yeah. never signed up Mm -hmm. and opted to take the survey. So yes. that's a pretty good number, I think. And so, yeah, this is actually kind of interesting. So, wow. So the survey attracted people who do their purchasing outside Stillwater. Hmm. Might even be people who are outside Stillwater, which is mm -hmm. again, another problem with doing online engagement stuff if you're trying to figure out what your community wants. Yeah, that's significant. That really that was 31. Not quite sure what's going on there, but uh, well, it's an interesting number. It is interesting. And I'm, I'm getting a guess here that it's going to be people on one side of some kind of issue, political ish, issue or other or the other. It's either, you know, like anti-mask people or pro-mask people, for example, or I don't know, mm -hmm. but it's exciting. Let's scroll down. This might be the best part of the whole, <laughs> the whole video. Here we go. What, if anything, would make you more likely to shop locally? Pretty much, they're just across the board, not likely to shop locally. Mm -hmm. And they're like 50% more other. Well, that's weird. Look at that. They're a lot less on online search and on business websites. Yeah, so so the red are the people who, who signed up after the survey was released. And well, or did, so they, they didn't necessarily sign up. Yeah, it's oh. people who took the survey while it was open and uh, were not in the panel. They weren't invited. They weren't like in the scientific panel. They just mm -hmm. found the survey and took it. But and they so obviously were people. interested in the topic. Correct. Yeah, this one is uh, is interesting because this is the clue right here. Yeah, so these are, this is kind of the anti-mask people. They don't really care. Being comfortable indoors, eh, we're already comfortable. So if I was gonna kind of summarize what this tells me, eh, some anti-mask people saw that there was a survey out about shopping and they wanted to say their piece about stuff. And the nice thing about flash vote is that you yeah. can sort it out that way if you want yep. to go and, and look a little bit deeper and look at that invited uh, filter, because that does tell you, um, you know, the difference between the blind survey people and the people who had an issue, whatever. Yeah, that's, 
that's right. And in fact, they don't even live in Stillwater, right? Right. So um, that's what happens. We've definitely heard of that happening and seen it happening, of course, with the data. So yeah, so if you, if you were to look at all the results, which is kind of the every result and lump them together, you know, that effect would be hidden because it's all, it's all in there. Mm -hmm. um, what's neat is that the locals only result because it's that, you know, that scientific located survey result that actually ends up being really close to the invited result. Right. Anyway, um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's basically everything to look for there and um, you know, have fun clicking the word cloud and there's usually gold in there, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's one or two things might pop up and you go, Oh gosh, that's a great idea. Yeah. So that's definitely worth looking at in terms of, um, you know, things you could do. Yeah. I'm just kind of taking the temperature of the, the people who are shopping and so you do get a, a sense that they're wanting more variety. They're wanting, uh, you know, to be able to find the products they're looking for. It's what mm -hmm. I took away from a lot of that. Uh, service is very important. Uh, just being able to, you know, find the products. Uh, so awesome. Well, thank yep. you so much for your time, Kevin. Uh, well, thank you guys. Hope that was helpful. Uh, it kind was. Kind of a I, fun experiment. And uh, people who want to have more you know, want to dive deep into this, can go into the filters, play with it a little bit, look at the uh, the answers that people provided in the open questions, and um, then be ready for the next survey. Excellent. Yeah, we'll look forward to it on our end, too. All right. Well, thank you so much. We, I, we've tucked up a lot of your time, so uh, we do appreciate it, and uh, we will see you again soon. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.